So that first session, this first week, I want to talk about comfort zones. Many of us have been in them. It's that place where we almost get held in that kind of fear or that laziness or there's many things we do that we do in our comfort zone. Think about when we get up in the morning. You probably have a routine, a comfortable routine. You get up, probably go to the bathroom, make your breakfast, brush your teeth, head off to work. What if you did it the other way around? Something like that. Oh no, it doesn't. It wouldn't feel right. It would feel strange. If you changed it around, it'd make you feel easy. You'd probably forget something. It's because it's become that comfort zone. So used to doing it day in, day out. They're all in your comfort zone. They're familiar, sorry, a familiarity. It's comfortable, but it seems safe too. I know if I do it that way, that way, that way, I won't forget. So we tend to get stuck in that comfort zone. So let's talk about some of the things how we could step out of our comfort zone. So let's think about those sweet tooth addicts, those sugar addicts. What if I said to you, stop eating chocolate? No. <laughs> oh no, I can hear some of you say, I couldn't do that. Let me tell you a story. About seven or eight years ago, I was probably the biggest, it's probably longer actually, 10 years ago, I was a, quite a sugar addict. I loved chocolate. And I had to stop eating it because of a medical condition that happened. I had to go and try other things. And what it did, by stepping out of that comfort zone at the time and trying other new foods, other new flavours, all of a sudden, there was a whole new world of cuisines open to me that I'd never, ever considered. I was the one that stuck to the, <laughs> as my family sometimes call it, the, um, the brown food. <laughs> The burgers, the chicken in breadcrumbs, which are fine. But now I eat all kinds of things, the seafoods, the, I'll give it everything a go. I had lobster the other day, that was something I would never have eaten. And I loved it. <laughs> Get an expensive taste too. Haven't tried an lobster yet, maybe that's my stepping out the comfort zone this year. Trying an oyster, who knows. Um, same with someone trying to stop smoking. No, I can't do that. It's my comfort, it really isn't. So, what do we need to do? How do we get out of this comfort zone? Why should we get out of our comfort zone? Because we'll learn something new. As I said, I learned that I liked foods I'd always thought I hated, not true. I was just comfortable in that old way of eating, so I'd never changed. If you're trying new activities, because you're stepping outside your comfort zone, you'll meet new people. When I started teaching, aqua, 12 years ago, I'd never imagined 12 years later I'd have the group of friends I have now. 50, 60 people that helped me to grow over those years too, taught me a lot have that conversation with someone in a coffee shop. I'm terrible for doing that now. My parents think it's funny. When I was in um, Paris last year, I ended up knowing and talking to about 10 people in the airport when we got stuck there because of an incident. They were like, you always end up talking to people now. And it was like, well, shows kindness. Shows that I'm still willing to step outside my comfort zone and it made a difference to those people. They were sitting there quiet. <laughs> the ones that didn't want to talk to me, I just walked away from. But the other ones, they learned something. Actually, I helped them when we had to move to another area because they would never have known. So me stepping out of my comfort zone meant that I could actually use that kindness to help someone else. So there's one of them. Stories of people who've stepped outside of their comfort zones, there are many. I know people that have been so shy that they 
struggle to go outside of their front door and now travel the world. I had a client a few years ago who literally went to the other side of the world from being quite socially anxious to doing that. But it was about going and trying. It's not some magic cure. It's about giving you the tools to go and try. Saying, why not? See how it feels and tell me how it feels. Set yourself challenges. 30 days to step outside your comfort zone. Set 30 things over the next month to go and try and do. Now, one of the things I've actually done this month and the last couple of days is I've set myself the challenge to learn sign language. So I'm starting off with the basics, you know, the ABCs and thank you, please. But I intend to learn it to the highest level I can and use it within my work. Every day do something different, just that little challenge, as I said, just try eating your breakfast in a different order. <laughs> Might not like it, but it'll be a different step. Walk a different way to work, go, go the harder way, go up a hill instead of going down the hill. You might meet that person you would never have met unless you'd gone in the other direction. What do you fear from stepping outside of that comfort zone? Embarrassment? Fear? Try it because actually when you do do it, I know, and I know there's people that I've seen in the last year or so that I would say it's had life-changing effects. They've been able to do things they never thought they could do, and actually they're doing more than they ever thought they could do. I saw a lot of people for public speaking last year, and many people when they came to see me said, oh, I just want to get it over with. Whatever I'm doing, I want to get it over with. And I now know they're doing more. They're out there speaking with the public, doing conferences. So stepping through that embarrassment and giving it a go, there will be some things you don't like to do, and that's fair enough, you know. Same with me. But I'll always give it a go, and if I don't like it, I don't have to do it again. But it's about having that go, trying it. What if everything went really, really well? What's the most amazing outcome you can think of? Write it down, write it down as a goal. Your goal for the end of the year to look back and go, wow, I did that. Let me give you an example for me. This year, I intend to travel to four different places in the world at least. I'm going to Ottawa. So I'm going back to Canada, somewhere I'd never traveled to in my life before. I'm going back there in um, February spend time with a friend of mine who knows where I'll meet because I'm stepping out of my comfort zone I'll be going out I'll be meeting a whole new group of people talking about what I do and then I'll be over in Vegas for a conference in August time and while I'm there I'm gonna go and explore so I'm gonna go and meet some of those Americans in Vegas and I'm half inclined to drive down to LA too to meet some of my friends I've made on the internet over there too. Go and have a coffee with them. And then I'm going to fly over to New York. These are things as that person that was shy, that would always go on holiday with a friend and do what they did, would never have done. Did it scare me the first time I went? Yeah, to a degree. Actually, when I was doing it, it was excitement. It was like, well, I'm there now. Let's do it. Let's see. And to be honest, when I went to Canada last year, it was probably one of the best trips I've ever had because I could go where I want, when I wanted to, I could talk to who I wanted to, and I had an absolute blast, I won't lie. So if you have ambitions to travel, go try, go do. What, what are the small realistic steps you'd wanna see first? So obviously that was the big goal I was talking about over there. But it might be how good you feel about yourself. It might be how 
when you look in the mirror, you think, I'd never have done that a month ago, a week ago, a day ago. And those little steps become those big steps. Someone recently told me to work backwards from my big goal at the end of the year and start from that little step and look at that big picture in the future. So it's about discovering you, discovering that those, that circle, that comfort zone, is something we've created. It's something we can step out of and go and try and do. It can be anything, it can be travel, it can be to learn a new skill. What skills have you always wanted to learn? And what's held you back from learning them? Maybe it was the embarrassment of not being as good as everybody else in the class. Does it matter? No, we all learn in our own ways. I, I struggled, I have struggled for a long time to write, you know. I didn't put a full, sentence, a full stop in a sentence properly until I was in my mid-20s because nobody ever taught me at school and I got away with it because I was the runner because I just did. But now, now, yep, I still make those mistakes. I'm sure if anybody has had emails from me, they've gone, what's she talking about? And I, I, I think it to myself sometimes. But does that stop me writing that email? Has it stopped me being able to write an article for the Huffington Post? In fact, two articles for the Huffington Post, I believe. Has it stopped me writing articles for the magazine? No, it hasn't. Yes, do I get someone to check my work, if I remember? Yes. But it hasn't held me back, so that thought of showing my work to someone else and being embarrassed, why? Because actually those words I put in that magazine, it proved a point, um, I think it was November or December last year, that someone rang me up that had read one of my magazine articles. They were never going to be a client, but what they said was, that article I needed to see, it made me realise it wasn't my fault. It made me realise I was okay as I am. That I'd been blaming myself for something that was going on in my, my life and I knew it wasn't, so thank you. So just remember that one thing you do can help others. So it's selfish to not step outside of that comfort zone. It really is. And then when you feel comfortable, you can talk to others. That's what I do now. I talk about what I do, where I've been. I'm not afraid of talking about my mistakes. And I'll make many more along the way, believe me. I know I will. But it's about learning from mistakes, moving forward. And I keep doing the, um, I'm kind of doing the hokey cokey in and out of that comfort zone. I find that comfort area and then I move back out and in. But I love it. I love going and trying those new things. Who knows what's going to be next? I have no idea. I think, as I've always said, one of my big things in the future is to do something like a TED Talk, if anybody's heard of them. Stand on a stage in LA and do a TED Talk, which is a motivational talk. And to write a story for Chicken Soup for the Soul, one of the, the books that inspired me many, many years ago with how people have got to where they are from where they'd come from. And it really doesn't matter where you are now. It's about taking those little steps. It's about trying it. Tell me about it as you do it. If you're not sure about it, if you think, should I, drop me an email. I'm there to motivate you. As I said, I'm gonna set up this private Facebook group within the next few days. So if you want to join, just drop me a message. My biggest message to you is to go and give it a try because outside of that comfort zone is you, the real you, the one that's been dying to get out for a long time. And that's what I've done. As I've said before, I'm the quirky one. I'm the one that likes to be a little bit weird because that's me. For a long time, I thought it shouldn't be. But now, I am me. I love being me. So it's time to be you again. And this 10 weeks is all about helping you 
to find that real you, to go out to try, to have that confidence to speak to that person you need to speak to. Speak to that person and just be you. And if need be, if it's never going to change, it's about walking away from that situation, that toxic situation too, because you're you and that's all you need to know. So I look forward to speaking to you next week. Next week, we're going to talk about being yourself. So my challenge to you this week is to start to step out of your comfort zone. Let me know the things you've done over the week. As I said, you don't have to post it up on a wall if you don't want to. It's great if you do, but you can just tell me too. I look forward to hearing all about all the things you get up to over the next 10 weeks.